All right. And looks like we are live. Looks like we are rolling. Hello, hello, everybody. My name is Junior, and I would like to welcome you all back into the Daily Digital. Um, today's date is the 16th, the 16th of August. It is Tuesday, and we've got four wonderful new articles to talk about here today. Um, the first one is going to be pretty funny. It's a little bit of a throwback for some of the people that's uh, going to be watching this show. Um, it's all about cell phones. You guys know when uh, when the cell phones came out, how they used to look. So it's going to be going to be kind of interesting to see the little comeback that uh, this company is trying to make. The next one is going to be about electric cars. Um, they were supposed to be dropping in price, but it looks like it's going the opposite direction. Um, the next one after that is going to be all about how this new um, work from home economy, uh, as they're starting to go back into work, <clears throat> they're looking to want a couple of new perks <laughs> that uh, we in the original working class did not exactly have when we first uh, first got started out. And then also the last one is going to be uh, about 3D modeling. So 3D modeling, if you don't know what that is, stay tuned for that. Uh, we will definitely be chatting a little bit about it and how you can possibly start making money funnier for it, from it. All right. So again, stay tuned and we'll jump right back into it. All right. So it looks like Nokia. Uh, so first of all, to anyone who was born in the late 1990s slash early 2000s, uh, feel free to exit stage left for just about five minutes um, because you may not understand what exactly this thing here is. But to anyone who is um, interested to learn more about it and to anyone who actually remembers this guy right here, this used to be called the brick. Uh, it used to be called the brick because essentially that's what it was. I mean, it, cell phones nowadays look nothing like this used to have actual buttons on our phone and the screen was not in color and it used to be mini size. So we used to actually text on this stuff. Um, but it looks like Nokia is now trying to make a comeback. Um, it's trying to revamp its classic brick. The game Snake was like the only game you could get on it and it was actually kind of fun. Um, it's now coming up. Oh wow, is it? It's now coming up on its 20th anniversary, the 6310. Uh, there was a bunch of Nokia's out there. Um, I can't. Even, I think I did have this one. I may have had this one. I can't remember. Um, but yeah. So looks like the phone model was just eventually discontinued in 2005 before getting the 2021 update that it deserves. Uh, obviously, the resurrected Nokia brick will feature many of the design features that made it so iconic in the first place, including a long battery life and the sturdy form that earned it the nickname. Um, new tweaks, meanwhile, include bigger buttons and a zoomed in menu, which will be displayed on a slightly upside screen. Um, the new Nokia 6310 takes the iconic silhouette of the original and brings it up to date with some great new additions, such as a large curved screen, improved readability and accessibility, um, plus a host of classic features that you might know of a wireless FM radio an impressive battery that can go weeks between charges and let's not forget the classic game snake um, it's going to be 60 bucks or 60 dollars euro 60 euros and this is what it's going to look like so this is the original up here on the top left and then the bottom right is going to be the updated phone in 2021 I like how they had the time also 2021 <laughs> that's funny um, but yeah, so at first I could not believe it. So I had to do a little bit of digging, did a little bit of research, went to the actual website and boom, it is actually for sale for, uh, no longer 60 euros, but actually 50 euros. Uh, you can get it in a classic yellow color. Uh, this is what it looks like. It definitely has a camera on the back. This is something they never had before. The screen is quite bigger. It has, um, what is it called? Uh, color <laughs> colored screen there it still has the same buttons and everything um, Yeah, I mean that, that doesn't look bad. It actually does not look bad I'm not sure how many people actually have purchased this. I'm pretty sure this is one of those like James Bond throwaway phones that you would get um, But again, it's you know one of those things that uh, there's that snake game looks like 
yeah, it's one of those things that, you know, it's actually pretty cool to see it making a little bit of a comeback. I honestly thought Nokia was uh, kind of like dead in the water until I started doing some research. And it looks like they still like, they make like tablets and stuff like that also. Not just phones. Um, so yeah, tablets there. They got a Nokia T10 and T20. I'm just like, all right, where are these actually being sold at? But I'm assuming, you know, we're in the, over here in the U.S. This is in Euro, so I'm assuming maybe over in the U.K. Um, they actually are making these Nokia phones and people are actually buying them. Uh, looks like they've got, yeah, so they've got like regular phones with full length screens and everything. So they're, they're still a phone company. I would definitely say that. They're still in the phone business. Um, I guess it's the 20th anniversary of the 6310. They just want to updo it a little bit. So therefore, they went ahead and made that phone. Um, all right. So moving forward, we have electric vehicles, EV vehicles. Um, word of advice to anybody who's into stocks, definitely get into uh, some EV stock if you can. But currently right now, the EV vehicles, their prices were set to decrease, reduce, um dramatically but it looks like they are actually increasing uh, and i can personally attest to this i went to the auto manufacturer uh like last week or whatever and i was looking into some cars and i was like asking about the, the electric cars um when they said they have currently none in stock he doesn't know anybody that has them in stock as soon as they you know reach the port before they even get off the boat they actually are like already pre-sold so if I wanted to get one, I have to order it or not order it, but I have to put my name on it while it's still in route. And then it'll be here like in two months or something like that. Uh, and then yes, he was going through the prices. He told me the price and then he was like, well, then you got to put an extra $4,000 on top of it. And I'm just like, oh, okay, that's, that's cool. It's not a big deal. But then I started thinking about it. I was like, well, why do I need to put, you know, extra 4,000? And he literally said, it's just, just, just because they're in high demand right now. They are in high demand. They are what everybody wants so when things go higher and up in demand there's a lower supply of them it's a thing called supply and demand if you don't know about it you'll definitely learn about it here soon um but they just they they make them more expensive they they have the every right to do so because it's theirs they made it and they <laughs> they get to choose whether what they do um so that's what this company forward is doing they just announced on tuesday that it's raising the price of their f-150 lightning electric pickup by about six thousand to eight thousand five hundred dollars. That's almost ten grand. And for what? I don't know. Um, the announcement follows recent EV price increase by several other brands, including Tesla, Rivian, Lucid, and GMC. Um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure. I think there was something on here. When I mean, I mean this part here makes sense. Let me find it real quick. Uh, okay, here it is. So spikes in raw material cost, including the price of nickel and lithium, which are key to the battery production, have undermined efforts to drive down the price of EVs. Despite more than a decade of EV and battery development, EV raw materials costs are more than double than the average of internal combustion engines uh, vehicles. So I guess for general Combustion engines, it costs like $8,255 for, for the raw materials. Uh, or no, for EVs, this costs $8,255 for raw materials. And then the combustion engines, which is, you know, gas cars, is just like $3,662. So, uh, I mean, again, that makes sense. You know, if it costs more to make it, then, of course, costs got to drive up or whatever. Um, but, yeah, when I was talking to the guy, it was just like, all right, well... <laughs> that's just what it is i guess you know so um so if you are in the market for an electric vehicle i would definitely say take a look into it um very very closely and make a decision very very soon especially if you have some time to get a car just go ahead and start looking to it anyway just because you know it might be a week two weeks two months before you actually get a vehicle um like the guy told myself um, but if you are, you know, thinking about getting one and you need one like ASAP, I would say, you know, maybe start off with a used vehicle. I would always say start with a used vehicle anyway, first of all, because um, if some people don't know, as soon as you drive the car off the lot, it depreciates in value, however much or whatever. Uh, some people say like 50%, but whatever. 
Uh, electric vehicles are right now again high in demand, so they are flying off the shelves right now. You can't really find them, uh, let alone you know um, find one for a decent price. So um, yeah. So the next thing that we have here is, and this is actually pretty funny. So the pandemic has um, made a lot of people a bit more relaxed. <laughs> and it kind of tells me that they got a little bit too relaxed to the point where they started um, maybe drinking, quote unquote, on the job while they were at home. Because a poll went out, like a survey, and they were kind of asking people, like, all right, if you're going back to work, how would that uh, work-life balance work and stuff like that? Um, and what would you want? You know, a couple of things that you would want to come back into work and everything. Uh, so the great resignation and war for talent have brought out the best of employers from better pay to flexible hours and the resources. Uh, but where do they draw the line? A new poll commissioned by Truzaic, Truzaic and conducted by YouGov ranks the kind of unusual new job benefits that employers would like to see employee employees would like to see employers offer, including both hangover leave and houseplant bereavement leave. And and literally an article says, "Yep, you read that right," because I was looking at that like, "Wait, are you serious?" Um, but again, if you're at home all the time and all you have is you and your plants, and one of your plants end up dying and you need to take time off work for that. I can understand. <laughs> I can understand it. I have uh, I have four dogs myself, and I guess they're like plants to some people. Um. So yeah. So a couple of the things here is breakup leave. Breakups happen, and they are almost as hard as such. Seventeen percent of all respondents, and roughly forty-four million Americans choose breakup leave as a desired job perk. Social media detox days? It's no secret that the internet has become divisive. Naturally, folks are looking to unplug and recover from the simulation overload that is called social media. Roughly 12% of the respondents, representing 31 million individual, choose social media detox days as a job perk that will um, like to see from their employers. First of all, this is one that I myself have I was an employer hiring people and they said they wanted social media detox days. I would not give only because you shouldn't be on in, in social media that much anyway. Um, breakup leave, that's something you can't control. Social media, you can control that. You can put the phone down and work the eight to 10 hours like you're supposed to. Um, and then after that, you know, you go home, you go for a run in the park, go to the gym, cook some food, watch a good movie. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do except for be on social media. Um, now, if they were talking about like screen detox time, just getting away from screens altogether, I can see that. But just social media, nah. Uh, leave for heart sick sports fans. So if your team loses a big game and you don't feel like coming to work the next day, you may be able to get that time off and it would be paid for. Uh, sporting events occur throughout the year, every year. From baseball to basketball to football, diehard fans know the pain is real when your team doesn't live up to your expectations. Uh, some, 9% of respondents opted for this perk, which equivalent of 23 million Americans. And then also houseplant bereavement leave is completely normal. It is completely normal to develop an attachment to our children, our pets, and even prized possessions. But houseplants... Is this the loss of is the loss of a special house plant so significant that you would need to call out of work the next day to mourn and recover? Evidently, at least five percent of the respondents, which is about 13 million Americans, uh, based on a survey, said they would like to have house plant bereavement. Um, here is the um, what's it called uh, the survey. Well, not the survey, but here is the results from the survey. Uh, the percent of people that would actually like it. And the top one was hangover leave. So basically, if you drank too much on your own the night before, whether you were out at a bar or if you're at home, 23% uh, of people said, hey, I shouldn't have to come and work with the hangover. Uh, and I should be able to get that as a leave, meaning that I would still get paid for it. Again, wow. <laughs> uh, a couple of the other ones, free sleep hygiene analysis and a paid premium subscription to a sleep app 
I can actually kind of see that. That's, that's interesting. Uh, we talked about breakup leave, free sessions with a Buddhist monk to meditate and or practice mindfulness. That should actually be number one. And add yoga in there too. Uh, paid hair coloring, tinting, and dyeing for those 30 and over. Why in the world should I have to pay for you to get your hair colored, tinted, or dyed? This is, um, that's an interesting one. That is truly an interesting one. I didn't expect that to be on there. Uh, said social media detox, compassionate leave for heart sick sports fan. Okay, we talked about that. Doom scrolling detox days. What is doom scrolling? <laughs> a premium subscription to a dating app of your choice. Why would I pay you to date somebody? House plan bereavement leave. Oh, wow. That was actually last on the list. That was 5%. Interesting. I actually thought that would be higher up. Even higher up than dating app. I guess if your plant died, you want to date somebody now. Uh, moving forward. So... And this is all kind of like in fun and in games, guys. Um... Who knows if they, I mean, actually, I mean, it's a real poll, but who knows if the companies are actually looking at this and thinking, hey, yeah, we should go ahead and do that. Uh, as you know, a lot of these tech companies, Silicon Valley companies, they have like a full on game rooms inside of their uh, office building. So like that and they have like sleeping areas and they have a whole bunch of other stuff, you know, just to give an added perk to people coming to work there. Um, so you never know. I mean, they might just say, like, hey, yeah, you know, your sports team actually lost yesterday. It was a Super Bowl. Go ahead and take the, you know, next week off. It's fine. We got it, you know. So um, it'll be kind of interesting to see what actually comes of that. Again, I don't know Truzaic, what their website is all about. I don't, I, I never heard of them before. Uh, but I definitely wanted to share that with you guys in case if you are uh, thinking of going back into work. Uh, this may be a couple of things that you, uh, you should be talking about. And then the last one on the list here is 3D modeling. Is 3D modeling a good career? This article was in April 7, 2021. Um, this article kind of talks through about what 3D modeling is and how you can kind of get into it. But I want you to keep in mind this article was in April 7, 2021 before the rise of the metaverse, before Web3, before NFT artists and stuff like that came out because right now they are high, high, highly in demand. And um, I don't think this website really does real much justice to poke on that a little bit. Um, so uh, a couple of things that you can do um, other than, so they got a couple of industries here that you could work in, which is the video game industry, movie industry, marketing industry, architecture industry. Uh, but these aren't the only places that you can work. Um, a couple of things that you could do is as 3D concept artist, uh, a UI graphic designer, an engineer, a manufacturing and production, interior designer, medical illustration artist, uh, 3D printing, motion and graphic design. Um, and a couple of companies that you could look into is software companies. Definitely for sure, if you're going into UI, UX design, they will need that a whole bunch. Manufacturing companies, uh, graphic design companies, video production. Again, we just talked about um uh yesterday about you know video production and stuff like that virtual production i have to say um engineering service companies and game development companies again game development is really big right now because that's exactly how the metaverse is being created uh on unreal engine i think last week i mentioned unreal engine and unity being the top you know competitors there for developing games and stuff so um and what you would want to do is essentially learn how to do 3d art um through various different like platforms and softwares uh, and the main thing you want to do is find out your specific modeling style and what i mean by that is are you going to be doing characters are you going to be doing like um humans or are you going to be doing like fut futuristic or not futuristic fictional characters like dragons and stuff like that are you going to be getting more into architecture um, do you want to do what this person here is doing more with like a pen and stuff like that? Um, what they're doing is sculpting. Um, or are you going to be doing more like more like mechanical stuff? So like, you know, you can make a camera or something like that for a movie scene or whatever. So there's a lot that you can actually get into. Um, truly anything your heart desires. If you can think it in your head, you can basically design it on, you know, 
uh, on the computer using some sort of CAD computer aided design software um, with through 3D modeling. Um, and a couple of different varieties that they have here are production and manufacturing. Uh, manufacturing companies always design and model their products first before actually developing them, which is 100% true. Uh, so there is a lot of 3D modeling software used to model and assemble products, uh, provide the useful of usefulness of 3D modeling artists within the industry. Architecture, again, but this is just real estate. So you can kind of get into that. Film work, the movie industry is yet another enterprise where 3D modeling is required. Now you'd be hard pressed to find any movie that was released without any input from a 3D artist. Um, be in it terms of graphics or even animations, um, even like music, uh, music videos and stuff like that. They're doing more virtual um, stuff. There's a lot of artists doing uh, virtual, uh, what's it called? Virtual shows out in the metaverse and whatnot. Um, I think last week or maybe two weeks ago, I told you guys about a like American Idol style um, uh, competition where singers actually dress up as their avatar or whatever. Uh, if you guys missed that show, definitely check that one out as well. Um, animations, um, they're doing a lot of stuff with animating NFTs, the Board 8 Yacht Club. If you were hired by one of them, I'm pretty sure you may be making like 100 grand a year just to animate their, you know, their Board Apes and stuff. Um, video game developers of video games require 3D modeling to create and design the avatar, the character, and the gameplay as a whole. Pretty much everything about a video game is 3D modeling minus like the sound effects and music or whatever, so... Um, you can do this completely as a freelancer. You don't have to actually work for a company. You can download a, a program called Blender. It's 100% open source and completely free. Hard to learn, but it's one thing that you can actually start to get into um, and do it, you know, pretty much just as a freelancer. You can jump on Fiverr and tell people, hey, yeah, I do like, you know, 3D modeling and stuff like that. And you can make a bunch of money on there doing that as well until you, you know, kind of advance forward um, again. They say in this salary starting here is fifty three thousand five hundred and twenty two. Um, again, it depends on location. Three D artists in L A. and San Francisco get the highest pay, while those in Chicago and Orlando get the lowest. But now with everything again is going virtual, the metaverse is booming, NFTs are booming, everything is shifting over to a more digital world. All of these different assets, all of these different characters, and everything. Um, are more in high demand uh, and they can't find a lot of people to actually create them. So, um, and I don't say trust me, but <laughs> trust me, I've been here and I teach people how to do CAD and stuff like that. Um, and that's, that's my main forte is CAD doing pretty much any computer aided design work, uh, 3d modeling and stuff like that. So, um, there's definitely a high demand of it. And, um, I think everyone should kind of get into it. All right, so that is all for today. Um, it was a wonderful show. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, let me know what you think about all of the articles. Uh, definitely let me know what you think should have been on the poll for um, <laughs> for the paid time off at work. Uh, what you would have chosen, let me know in the comments. Uh, definitely let me know what, uh, what you guys think about the uh, EV vehicles and stuff like that as well. What you guys... Um, what you guys think about that by the price increase and everything so um again i myself am looking for one not 100 percent sold just yet but um may have to may have to jump into it just to kind of see what it is um or how it handles and stuff like that they're actually pretty cool and it's uh very cost effective as well until it gets time to swap out all those batteries then it gets uh <laughs> pretty expensive so um yeah so that is all it for today all the links are in the description. Please hit me up in the comments. Check out all my social media channels. And you guys have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday.